Today, I'm gonna show you guys how you can fix or remake inline spinners that you guys have that may have been damaged. For instance, if you look at this guy right here, this treble hook right here, one is already gone. And originally, this guy right here was bent. As you can see, I could just squeeze it and it just bends, right? So I basically pry it back open into where I need it to be. It's not perfect. But the issue is, for thin wires like this, the more you bend it, the easier it will break. So next time I actually fish with this, and if I catch a trophy fish, and it bends the hook, it may snap off, and you don't want that. So, two things you guys could do, which the first one I won't get into within this video, but you could just cut off this hook right here with some wire cutter pliers, put a swivel, and you add your next hook, and you're good to go. That's the easy way. But let's say if we look at this guy right here, right? That looks still good, but look at this. The blade is bent a little bit. I don't know how well this will work in the water, but let's say this got rusted or it's, it's in worse conditions. Well, everything else on this, it's good. You know, this, these are weights, these are materials. The hook is good. Or let's say, say right here, the blade here is good. The body here is good. You guys have a good collection of these. You know, whether you find them or you have a lot of bad stuff, uh, bad lures, broken lures, you put on the side, you come back in the winter time like this, you guys can fix this. You can make your own personal inline spinner. So to, in today's video, I'm showing sure you guys how I'll disassemble these guys here and make new inline spinners. A couple things you'll need in this video. Of course, you need your wire bending tool. I got this one here, multi-step, so that you have different diameter wires loops that you can make. Very useful. You need some needle nose pliers and a trusty wire cutter. Lastly, you need some wires, and these are stainless steel wires that I use for other projects such as creating Tokyo rigs. It's basically 0 0.03 millimeters, and uh, these come in six inch, so it has plenty of length, so you guys could do whatever you guys want. And if you guys decide to replace hooks, you guys could buy your treble hooks, but today, in this video, I'm actually gonna replace the hook with a single hook, because single hook is a lot better in my opinion, especially if you guys are catch and release folks, or if you guys like to net your fish. And uh, yeah, treble hooks is trouble, because they get caught in the nets. Today I am using Mustad, the Limerick hook, extra strong, size six. These are salt water rated, so it's gonna last for a long time. And if you guys wanna dress your hook with some feathers, you guys get the, your favorite materials, whether it's hackle, or if you guys wanna use some synthetic stuff, some flash, whatever you need, you just need a vise, a, uh, some thread, and some glue, and you're good to go. Let's take a look at this inline spinner for a second. You have the loop on the top, then comes your inline uh, spinner blade, you have a bead, then you have your body weight right here. And if you look closely right here, hopefully this thing focuses well, you can see that there is a piece of wire here. So what this actually looks like is that the loop that's holding this hook right here comes back to here and it bends out, which holds everything together. So let's disassemble this. I will have to cut here and here to get the parts out. And then we'll recreate this using brand new wires and a new hook. All right, now that I have analyzed this, let's cut this thing apart. Dissection time. Just cut this guy right here. There it goes. Put this on the side. Let's just take these two guys out. The bead and the blade. Then remove this hook and the bottom body. So I'll just cut this whole loop out, both of them. Oh, this is actually harder than I thought. All right, let's... Oh, there it goes. All right. So the three things that you need from this old inline spinner are these three here, because these are the good stuff. So guys, I'm gonna be using single shank hook today. This is a Mustad. They're, let me just back up a little bit. They're Limerick hook, size six, extra strong. This is relatively cheap, so I could you know, have a lot of these. But anyway, this, this is what it is, guys. The single shank hook. I prefer to use this since I'm remaking it because treble hook is trouble. You guys do a lot of trout fishing. Uh, I mean, stock trout, it's okay because you guys are supposed to be taking that stock trout out of the waters because they stock it in locations where they're not native and they compete with the local fish. But, you know, sometimes when you finish hitting your limit or close to your limit, you want to catch and release and release them and go for a bigger fish. You should have a single hook so that, you know, the next person try to catch it. You know, it won't, it won't uh, be a fish that's like have a broken mouth or anything like that. You don't want to damage the fish. So uh, I prefer to have a single hook. Plus, 
Uh, I'll use this for crappy fishing, pickerel fishing, and any other type of fishing. And another good benefit using a single shank hook is that you do not need to worry about the fish twisting up all over the net and it gets tangled up. Alright, so now we'll take this tackle and we're going to use just about all these feathers here. And um, so we want this at the tail, like that. So let's stroke this back. And this, we want it about, about right here. Okay. So I'm just going to tie this down just a little bit, just like that. In fact, I'll just strip that off because we don't need all those. And let's just restack this on top. Just like that. And I'm going to get this thing down all the way right here. And with the remaining hackle, I want to dress the rest of, of the hook. So let's just put this up here just like that. Up to right around here. I'm assuming that's where I want to stop. So what I want to do from here is I'm just going to wrap this around the shank, stroking the feathers back after every rotation so that you free up the fibers. And you don't really need that much. Okay. And I'm gonna twist that this way. And let me bring this back just a little bit. Cause I think that's, this is it. And so I want, okay. all the feathers down because you want it going backwards uh, you can't get them all I'll trim the rest later or if I stroke it back like that there we go so there we go we have a nice tail right here now we can trim these bad stuff out of here finished tool. If you don't have one, it's okay. Just do some, a lot of half hitches. Okay. Then you use your favorite cement glue. I'm going to use some epoxy today. Some UV epoxy. Got some cheap arts and crafts stuff from eBay. China, China stuff. But it'll work. It will work. These are thick stuff. So let's get it around. It's definitely not coming off. <laughs> Guarantee you that. <laughs> and then you take your UV blowtorch. Try not to look at it because uh, I don't want to get no cancer in my eyes. Get enough UV radiation from the sunlight. So there you have it. We got the single hook here. Now let's get ready for this inline spinner. Alright, so the next part is we need to create a bottom loop for a hook and this guy needs to also go into it. So we need to some length, right? So let's say the loop needs about this much wire. Then we need to double this up to here so it goes in and back out. So I need at least start my loop right around here just to be safe, okay? Or maybe right here because, um, no, no, no. We need to start a loop right around here. Yeah, right there. Okay, so that should be good right there. So I got my looping pliers here. So let's just create our loop right there. And what I'll do is I'll create my loop all the way around just like that. And I'll show you guys where I'm at. So there you go. That's my loop. And then I'm going to bend it back now. I'm going to back up just a little bit just to get that there. I'll flip this. So, so you see, I actually made this thing a little slow uh, eyelet right there. And I'm going to try to do the same thing right here on this side. And let's just bend it back. Let's bend it back. This, so what I do is I'll put this guy back here. And actually, I'll try to clamp it right 
this mark right here. Oh. See, see, I could, I could rotate this guy anywhere I want. I want to bend right here, so I have put that here. There we go. Kind of, it's okay. It's okay. It's not too bad. It doesn't need to be perfect because once we put the tubing in, it should be fine. So next step is we take a hook, we slide a hook all the way through. There we go, and that's our tail right there. Now, we take a tubing, and I believe that uh, the orange was at the bottom. We go through both of these guys right here. Look at that, already there. Then, we just take a normal pliers, so we don't need our other bending pliers right there, and what you, we wanna do is we bend this guy. Okay. There we go. And we just cut this piece off using our wire cutter. And there we go. We have that part right there. Really good. Put a bead on from the top. Then take our inline spinner. There we go. Look at that. Good to go. Make our very last loop. Right there, and I'm actually gonna bend this guy just a little bit more because I want to wrap this guy around the main shank there. There we go. So I'll grab my needle nose ply right here, squeeze that there, and let's just start wrapping around. The main shank. that off so let's re-bend this one more time because it just got out of shape while I was uh, twisting this whole thing and there we have it look at that my fixed inline spinner with a single hook dress hook tail I hope you guys have found this video useful again I think the easier way would have been just adding a split ring here and just changing out the hook However, sometimes you never know what's the condition of your entire inline spinner. So, which is why I've shown you guys today how to make your entire inline spinner using your old inline spinner parts. So yeah, if you guys find inline spinners or you guys love using inline spinners and you have a lot of them uh, broken, don't throw them away. Keep them on the side and maybe one day you guys can repurpose them, especially during the winter time when you guys don't have much fishing to do. And by the time of spring, you guys will have a lot of inline spinner remade, repurposed. It's all about reusing your old materials these days, man. You can't just go out there and uh, keep buying new ones, right? Hopefully these will save you guys a lot more money. And again, like I said, I prefer the single hook as it does a lot less damage to fish as well as a lot less hassle because you don't need to worry about the death roll when netting a fish. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please give me a like. And if you guys want to see more of these type of videos, leave me a comment below. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing because there's going to be a lot of fishing using inline spinner this season, especially for trout, crappies, pickerels, you name it. Heck guys, if you guys didn't know, inline spinner is deadly in the springtime for bass and snakeheads. The fish don't wait guys, get ready for your spring fishing, tight lines.